August 13th, and the agenda has been posted in three public places and on the website, and it has been emailed to interested parties, so we can go ahead and and um, hold this hold this meeting. Uh, before we start, does anybody have any additions to the agenda they'd like to make? Going once? Going twice? <coughs> All right. Um, then we will um, start right out, I guess, with the, um, hold this down a little bit farther. We have some guests here, um, Mr. Benson and the Great Hawk neighbors. Yes, I have President Great Hawk. Yep. Norm Christensen and my neighbor, um, Jeff Steinkamp. Mm -hmm. And um, I was here uh, sometime in June and I had a discussion with you folks at the select board meeting regarding the dust concern uh, at the intersection of Austin Hill Road and Access Road. And my house is situated pretty much right at that intersection and it's about 50 feet from the edge of the road. So. I was getting a ton of dust from the traffic going up and down Austin Hill, as well as the turning traffic, turning from Access to Austin. And um, as the summer progressed and the dryness of the just the climate this year uh, made being out in the yard uh, pretty much a lot of dust being breathed into my nose, my mouth. I could taste it um, when cars went by at. 30 miles an hour, um, there would be about a 20 foot high dust cloud and 50 foot wide at its worst. Um, as the speeds of the cars were increased, or like a truck, big truck, commercial truck went by, you know, it's running cover, you know, go run for cover because um, everything in my yard, my house, on the outside was completely covered in this white powdery dust. Um, so I came down, I asked you folks to maybe address it. Um, you acted right away. You came up with the calcium chloride and laid about six passes in front of the house, okay, on um, the intersection and as well as downhill of me. It lasted for about 24 hours, that application. As soon as the water that was mixed in with the chemical burned off, the dust was right back. So, I have been informed that a year or so ago, the section of Austin Hill Road between my driveway and the big farm below me, which is the Whitaker Hill Farm. Yeah. Um, that used to be a low section of Austin Hill, and it used to be muddy and ruddy in the winter. Um, the road was raised with uh, a bed of gravel, I've been told, and then the town had some excess chopped up, recycled asphalt and they laid eight inches of asphalt over the gravel and then they laid this dot, the white material that we're using now over that. So what we think is happening, um, there's a few opinions out there, um, because there's an asphalt layer under the dirt, no moisture is getting up through the ground, which naturally permeates to keep the road somewhat moist. Um, it's acting like a sheet of plastic, we think. So we're just depending on rain or any kind of humidity moisture that we get. All of the groundwater is moisture is being stopped at the asphalt. Because this stuff is on several roads in town. Uh, a good example is like North Hollow. That's fairly straight in a lot of sun. And if you drive that road, you don't get a fraction of the dust that you will get if you drive that one section of Austin Hill between our two driveways. So we think the asphalt is causing the dirt to be excessively dry and it's going to be a continued um, issue with me as well as the people that all drive up and down the road. If you're driving behind somebody, everybody that lives north of me is getting completely dusted out. So the town highway department, Cooter and Dana showed up last Wednesday because I had spoke with them and they ran the grader through the intersection to try and scrape some of that fine powdery dust that's being crushed up by the turning vehicles. Um, and it helped a little bit, and they laid in more of that chemical down, and that has helped a little bit too. But I noticed uh, they were there last Wednesday, already Saturday, it was already starting to dust again. And I'm pretty desperate. I actually went out there with 300 feet of garden hose and the sprinkler at night 
to try and activate the chemical a little better because there was no rain. And um, it, it was a temporary solution and it's helping a little, but I think if we get another dry couple of days, she's gonna be right back to her old self. Um, so I don't know what we could do about it, but we did discuss that. Maybe a little bit of pavement in that intersection between access on north and south of me. So the cars, when they come up in the trucks, they actually turn on pavement. Instead of turning on dirt, will help them from grinding up this stuff to a fine cement powder. I actually scooped this out of the road today so everybody knows we all drive on it, but yet we don't look at it up close. And this is right out in front of my driveway, and you can see it's like a bag of cement, okay? And when a car comes by or a truck, it just kicks it up like nothing I've ever seen. So I want to just submit that as an exhibit. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Yeah, that's it. This is the stuff. It's, yeah. it's nasty right in my section, and it's because it's starved for moisture. So You can take that home with you. <laughs> <laughs> I got plenty of it. <laughs> so I need some help. Um, I tried to stain my garage over the past week. I'm out there staining it, the dark hawk stain, and cars are going by and the white dust is sticking to the stain, and you know, it's like, what are we gonna do, so? Um, I know the town doesn't have a lot of funding for paving, and I was hoping that I could get on some kind of priority list when we do have some funding for paving to get at least that intersection 100 feet above and below me paved. That, I think that would help out a lot of people including the town DPW because, you know, that curve gets a lot of traffic and it gets heavily rutted in the winter. Be easier to plow and keep up as well. And that's my section of Austin Hill Road and I don't know if um, Norm has anything to say or as well, but. Well, I guess I'd be curious to hear from some of the people that have lived up there over the years. I drove up there a few days ago and I witnessed no dust. I mean, it was after they graded. It was obviously it had been freshly graded and it was not looking so much like the white he must have dug up some of the, the deeper stuff but yeah. but the um, the whiter limestone gravel that we've been using because of this stuff it actually sets up and this seems to be holding really well so it's kind of a catch-22 people are excited about this product and that it's been drying up some of the bad spots in the road in a, in a good way. I agree. It's um, a pretty good but what, what people that have lived there for years, what what is your experience? Yeah, 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 history. Years ago, it was the exact opposite. It was just a it was just quicksand. You just you know sink right down to your chassis, and get stuck in there. You're right in there in the road. It was just mud, mud. Yeah. And then when that new material, uh, I guess you guys found a source for that new material, the limestone aggregate, whatever. It did create, and, and the, the road was raised a little bit with a base, large rocks, and then smaller rocks. And then I guess this asphalt layer, um, and it and it did, you know, during mud season, it's it's glorious when, when it's when it's wet. Um, you know, in the early spring, it's just wet all the time. But then when the summer comes around and uh, you have some sunny days, it, it does. You, you, the evidence is really on our cars. You can actually, exhibit B might be. Uh, Jeff's car right out here in the parking lot. You can look on his back window and, and see. We, we, we usually, you know, when we're going to Rutland or something and go park in a parking lot, you can you look at our window and everybody else's window and it's like, wow, it looks like I was through a war here. I was in Iraq. So um, that, that, that's pretty much been the past, you know, four or five summers since this new stuff has, has come on. But I, I do see the effort that was made you know, last couple of weeks was scraping off that top layer, getting down to the asphalt, and, and there's not any dust in that area. But then my question becomes, is there, is there a way, is, is there a mixture that, that can possibly use, you know, use the qualities of that limestone, that really hard, dusty stuff, and add a little more mud or clay or, you know, maybe 10% or whatever it is to keep that dust together. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there's a recipe. I've seen other roads, you know, exposed to sun, and, and they, there just isn't that dust. It, everything sort of holds together. Um, I, I'm not an expert on... I, last summer, I um, went to visit some people. I don't remember where it was, but it was 
over a few ridges and then um, Chelsea or somewhere there. And I went down a road that it was obvious that they, they do not use calcium chloride. And you think that this is dusty. It was like ghost trees, uh, and it was amazing. And it's, uh, it was, it, I mean, I know this seems to, like extremely dusty, but the the fact that we use any calcium chloride, even though it's it's starved for moisture, it, it's it's. Um, I'm not dis, you know dissing your experience and what you had, but um, it could be so much worse. I've seen some. It was, it was amazing, this one road I drove down, and it was just everything. The lawns, the trees were just like white, like, like those Christmas trees, they throw the white stuff on. It was bad. But I know, Cooter, have you got any insight or input into to what to, how to deal with that? Where I've, I've noticed there's a lot of dust wherever that material was over the asphalt. It mm -hmm. seems to be worse, mm -hmm. the crushed asphalt. Yeah. Can you put it and no, I don't. No. I hate to add anything clay or anything and just gonna make mud and defeat what the purpose of the yeah. the gravel is, the right. limestone. Right. Um, a couple of things I just wanna say. I uh, I actually I have done a little bit of research on this these road issues. And uh it is it is a problem in, in certain areas. Every town has these issues where you can excessive dust is excessive dust is not a good thing for a lot of reasons. Not only is it unhealthy as as you all know, but um, it also every time there's a dust cloud that your road is going away, and eventually and quickly you're replacing it with more material because it's just it goes away. So, I think it, my, my view is on it, I think this needs, I think this is a credible issue. And not only up on Austin Hill, but in some of our steeper grade dirt roads where you, you get a lot of chattering, you know, a lot of um, scalloping of the roads. Um, from what I've learned, that could be significantly reduced with uh, not just not necessarily calcium chloride, that is certainly uh, one of the go-to solutions. But there's other uh, there's other materials available. There are a mixture of calcium chloride and a few other things that are considered green and safe that can be used on roads. That, at least in theory, um, uh, react with the moisture in the ground and so forth, and actually harden up in the surface to the point where. Um, it holds steep grades way better for way longer. The fact that the calcium chloride is not holding up very long, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, from what I've researched, three to six months it should be good for it. So, but again, this road has a pavement, on, this road has the pavement underneath. This is a all crushed ledge, there's no natural right. binder. But we use and I the think same if stuff. it did have a little better okay. natural binder, but let's it let's take, take care of some of that. Let's take Maple Hill for an example. The bottom of Maple Hill was done with this a couple of, a couple of years ago, and uh, you know better than anybody that road is held up extremely well. Uh, it's like concrete, and you rarely get a pothole. Um, What's the difference? Is it because of the moisture? There's more moisture underneath, perhaps. But I, I think that my, my feeling is this needs to be looked at more closely, and this, there has to be a solution to this. And I'm more than willing to, you know, keep digging into this to try to find a solution. I've seen other towns. You know, every every road has different situations to it. Um, you know, down south a little bit, I've been driving through Woodstock on some dirt roads and they really hold together. I mean, you know, they, they have more money and maybe they're using a more, uh, <laughs> maybe they're using a fancier product, but it, it, there, there must at least be a poor man's version of that product or, or what they're, you know, there's, uh, there's got to be an understanding of what we're going for to, to bind everything. Uh, 
I was just going to suggest um, the Better Back Roads Forum is really helpful for questions like this. Towns always are putting, you know, questions out there. What are other towns doing to treat such and such a problem? How are they dealing with it? So, you know, that's something either Cooter or you and I could work on, or I could do it, whatever you want. Tell me what exactly what the question needs to be. I'd be glad to put it out there. And towns are pretty good about responding, and it's usually you know, row for them and who are, you know, the experienced people who are answering. Well, I think, I think we need to <coughs> explore that, but we've kind of got to explore it with people that are using the same material. Yeah, well that should be part of the because query. Because yeah, okay. if you drive 40 miles from here, if you drive to Royalton, their material is sure, totally different. Sure, if you're over in the Champlain Valley where it's all play. Then right, it's well, thing. yeah, Middlebury, Brandon, or Brandon, area towns there are probably using the same material. <coughs> so I'm just, we kinda gotta go and we could find out from the from the quarry what towns are buying. Uh huh. Yeah, that would be a maybe more targeted approach. We can ask those towns directly. But I just you know, if you go to Fort Lebanon area and you know the material that's coming out of Pike, it's a different sure. lot. Right. So what they're doing may not work for us. Okay. Yeah, we can just say this is what we've got down on the road. And, and, but, but I can call <laughs> and get some town names. Sure. So but that's one one calls. way to research. There may be others. Right. Well, mm -hmm. I know there's quite a few municipalities that have this issue, and there and so, uh, according to what I've studied, there are some success stories out there, and I think we just need to take a look at that and see what we can do here. Bruce? Yeah, um, last summer or spring, the Forest Service did an experimental uh, layer of gravel on the Chittenden Brook Road. And if, if you've been up that Chittenden Brook Road, you know there's that steep hill half a mile up there, and that's held up. I mean, it's almost like having a blacktop there, but it wasn't blacktop. So you might want to check with the Forest Service or the forest engineer in Brooklyn or with the Harveys here, they did they did the job. So it's great. Just well, grab them. Well, this is and true. It's, uh, but it's the dust isn't and, the problem. And it cools until it, it dries out, and it's also a shaded area. My concern on my stretches, I'm unique though. I have this asphalt eight inch layer underneath the dirt, so I hate to see the town waste more time, money, and effort to put experimental chemicals or mixture down when then if it's the asphalt that's causing the problem. Right. So they need the road may need to be working on that one area. Right. But you know, this problem is that the layer it's not like a solid eight inches. I don't think we kind of mix that stuff in mm -hmm. stuff. But it that is that where we have that's put that wrap and I think I don't I don't know if there's eight inches of wrap in there, but it's not like it was paved, but it, it if it does probably put a barrier up for the moisture, but that's also why, and that's what happened on the bottom bottom of Maple Hill Road. Put some of that down, and then the, and that's what's keeping the roads from breaking down in the mud season. So it's a catch-22. So that is one of the factors that would need to be ans asked with, you know. Cooter came through with the crater. He actually there's a chunk of material completely gone in the middle of the intersection. Okay. Yeah. It's and the right. asphalt's fairly thick there. Okay. Boy, if we could go down with some more asphalt type material just for that intersection, that would be so much better for the maintenance of that intersection. I could care less if I live on a dirt road or around. I just don't want to be eating dust 24 seven, okay? And I'm not here to just try and get the front of my house paved by no means, okay? But because it's so busy and there's so much traffic, there's something like 90 homes up there. Um, it's all day, it's constant. In the winter, it's uh, it's rugged. It's a good amount of contractors. Yeah, I just can't just go over it with gravel, like eight, eight ten inches of gravel, just bury it. Well, that's the. Uh, we have a great problem there if we do that. Yeah. Coming the transition to the pavement to the, to the access road. You can't dig that section out. Well, that it would have to be dug out and, and taper down to it. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Jeff, a couple of gravel. Uh, from the time uh, Jamin put that sign up to go slow. Um, that was maybe a week or ten days ago. Uh, going 
both ways and I do it at least three times a day. I haven't gone more than 20 miles an hour. And uh, when I was coming down toward Jamin's house, it would start right at that intersection and it would go all the way down to Peggy's driveway, uh, Tom Wicker's widow's driveway. And it made me think, well, maybe that was the last section that just had some more put down. But coming back up again, uh, I noticed that it started at her driveway and, you know, continued after the intersection. And, uh, you know, we have a 30 mile an hour speed limit and at 20 miles an hour, uh, I would start looking in my rear vision mirror and I would see the, the dust. But the average person going up and down there is going at least 30 and in many cases more. And we have, you know, renters who rent the houses. And I mean, some of these people uh, aren't going anything like 30 either yeah. way. Yeah. So, you know, that's an internal problem. But uh, uh, that, that last section must have been the section that was the most recently put down. And even at 20, it was a problem. How about taking Maple Hill home? Using the tire most of the way. Well, uh, well, how about taking Maple Hill and not going over that section of the road? That's so true. You know, but the cars, when they come down Austin Hill to make the turn to access, when they hit the transition between the elevated dirt and the pave, they kept up a dust storm, okay? And it's being ground up. And when you get some Yahoo from the city in their fancy European sports car or SUV, they go straight away and they kick that stuff up and it's, I get all the repercussions of it, you know? So I, I hate to see we do this many a times when I think we all kind of think the best solution would be some, a patch of pavement right through there. Yeah, I think that's just gonna kick the can down the road though, a little bit. But, but we'll, you know, dig into it and see what we can come up yeah, with. There's a priority list yeah. for getting on. Yeah. You know, hot spots to be paved. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing you know, the white stuff on your lawn will be snow. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> it's, it, t I thought it would be easy to go out there with the lawn sprinkler and sprinkle in front of the house. Yeah. That road sucks up the moisture. I was out there for a good hour after everybody went to bed, and by the next afternoon, it was gone. You're going to be okay this week. It's going to rain. Thank goodness. Yeah. So you won't have to test. <laughs> right. so, thank you for yep. sharing your concerns. Um, Moving on to no, don't move on. Either. No, no, not moving on yet. All right, no, on yet. still roads. Okay, still roads. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. First of all, thank you. I'm thrilled to see you on our resident, <laughs> even though you might not be thrilled. I'm thrilled. Um, Kate and I went out and measured our ditches. Um, first of all, you've done an excellent job, and I applaud you for it, and I thank you for it. Um, he stood in the ditch this evening, and the deepest ditch we have below my house is four feet. I have pictures. Four feet is up to here on me. Um, all I see are, I, I can't tell you how many people out of state, in state, I've given hot chocolate to. They've had to have people come tow them out every year in the winter. Um, and I'm concerned about that stretch that's four feet. You know, it's like, I don't know if it's the whole road on one side. And I'm sure that like Riverstone, if we can do it, which you might not like, um, would be cheaper than guardrails but it, or, or something. I don't know the solution. I'm not a road person, I'm not a road crew guy. The width of our road is 16 feet, you know, plus or minus a foot. Um, so I'm just concerned about what's going to be done to the ditches. And I know that grass is an option. However, all I see are vehicle study. It's a shaded part of the road. And pretty much every year there's anywhere between four and eight vehicles that go off the road there. 
So I just wanted to put it out there that maybe there's a good solution, a cheap and easy solution to put in those ditches. Um, well, I think the first step is to, to try and keep those vehicles from going off the road with a little bit that better, would be great. Um, um, you know, better regime of, of sanding up there. Right. You know, so we're hoping to and, address and that. Yeah. In, in terms of the, the depths of the ditches, Four feet's pretty deep. It is pretty deep, yeah. Well, um, Martha? I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the road. Town Line Town Line, line road. road, yeah. So but yeah, anyway. as, as you know, those were just recently done. I know, and a and, beautiful Well, job, which, so. which was done to the, the specs that we were given by the state about their new um, requirements and trying oh. to control runoff. And so it's, yeah, I agree, they, some of the ditches seem absurdly deep, deep to me. They don't, um, they don't stay that way, that's for sure. No. Fill up with cars, bumpers, and stuff like that. And, yeah, and, um, <laughs> yeah I'm, 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 I sent a lot of that to the May yeah. Green Up Day thing. Um, but yeah, it's a concern. I agree. It's you well, know, if our a, roads are great, it's a ditch. It, it's a ditch. And if you go off Jerusalem, Sky Hollow, right? There's ditches too. There's a lot of places where that guardrails are four feet. That's just the beginning of the trip if you go down over. Yeah, right. So right. Well, so maybe if it fills up with snow and ice and snow and ice and snow and ice, it'd be an okay thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was not just not a thought I had. No, I've got nothing. Well, yeah. back there. Yeah, I had a, a road request for um, bingo. Bingo right now is 35 miles per hour, and um, I just wanted to see if it was possible to get a slower um, no uh, speed limit on that and one reason is just a lot of use on bingo walkers hikers bikers also by my house i'm kind of on a straightaway and cars are parking uh, along my property and the road really isn't there's not it's not safe to have you know a car there and then people trying to pass especially when it's at 35 miles per hour um and um you know as i said where I live on Bingo, you come up over the, uh, you come up the hill and it's just a straightaway and people are driving really, really fast. And I, I don't, I'm not naive enough, to, you know, I, I realize that people probably aren't <laughs> gonna go 25 or all the time, but I'd love to at least have that posted so I can yell at them and they're going by. Um, Maybe in the summer. That you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So the speed limit on Bingo is higher than two towns. Right, it is, and, it, and yeah. there's no sidewalks, and there's a lot more people yeah. in the road. Um, and you know, as somebody that lives there, going back and forth across the road, you know, I, I have to be careful pulling out or going across the road. Yeah. Speed limit on the forest service roads, like the campground road, you know. I don't know that that's posted. Um, Chittenden Brook? Yeah. I think that's 25. 25? Yeah. Most of the Forest Service roads? 25 to 35. 25 to 35. Yeah. Depends. So that's on the high end of that, that range. Yeah. I would say there's a lot more use on bingo than there is on Chittenden Brook. Yeah. And that's, um, and of course, not everybody follows that limit, mm -hmm. which is the real problem, yeah. Could you speak up? I'm her neighbor. I'd like to see. Oh, second that? Okay. Yeah. I'd like the third that. All right. Third, not 35. Wow. Third. third, yeah. 25 sounds like a nice number. Yeah. What's, what's the process of changing the speed limit on a public road? Well, my guess this is first step of the process is for the public to come and, and you know bring it up and and okay. talk about it and think about it and make a decision yes yeah. step, step two would be to talk about it and think about it amongst ourselves and with the, the road foreman and, and you know see what what makes sense they got a warrant they got to warn it 
entitled to have the person who's spending all that money or the money's being given well, to him come in and bring us up to date. The town agent to defend and, and conduct suits, that is, this is something beyond their, they're not a trial lawyer. lawyer. So this is, this is why we're forced to go to someone else. So that, that person is not... Well, if it's not that person, then it falls on the select board. Well, and it least, falls on the select let, board, let right? Let us know what we'll tier of eight months, something more than we spent twenty thousand dollars. Now, most recently, Mr. Mayor and Ms. Casella filed and had an, an approved motion to intervene, which means two private citizens, non-residents, have become part of this action. They have available to them everything that's been done on the side of the town because that's where they came in two non-residents. Well, all the residents of the town, they don't know what's going on. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Yeah, 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 as being, as being yeah. legally permitted to intervene on the side of the town of Rochester. Can I ask where you heard that, Walt? Public document, motion before the court, okay. signed by a judge on the 13th so of July. So you're obviously following it online. No, I'm not following it online, oh, but it's so coming to my attention. Oh, yeah. But at any rate, that is public information. So how and, are you and getting at the knowledge, though? You say it's coming to your attention. Are they mailing the things or emailing well, the Herald? That's, that's, that's not important to the issue. Well, the important thing to the issue is that, at the very least, the select board should certainly be aware that these parties have been permitted to intervene on the side of the town. Yes. They, they then have available to them yeah. at no cost yeah. everything that's gone on, yet they're non-residents, and the residents still know nothing. I'm actually a property owner. So I know I, the I property owner. I don't think that that's, uh, 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 I don't understand why that's uh, a, a distinction in, in your mind. That, but the, well, there's, but there's, to, to the bigger question of you're saying you want to hear the blow by blow story, this I mean, is not, blow blow. this I isn't. Periodic updates, there's a difference. Periodic updates we, is basically we're, with the, we're, with the, it's the update is it's out of our hands and now and it's being it's being you know the lawyers are researching um, history and um, basically digging through history and looking to see what's what and and when things were created or if they were created or if they weren't created and and that's um, that's where it's at. I mean, really, it's been taken to the level of the, the lawyer realm, and that's why it costs so much so much money. What effect does this intervention have on the cost of the taxpayers? Um, extensively, it will lessen the cost to the taxpayers. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. How much, hopefully? Um, <laughs> no idea. No idea. No idea. Martha, your question? Excuse me, Dan, I'm somewhat confused about what I should be doing. What the so cut to the chase thing is for the paper. Uh, so basically, the, it's, uh, the, you're saying the matter is out of the town's hands right now while legal research is being done? It's, it's into the 
town's legal representation tax. And I have done, my understanding is Walt is asking for more information. And, and basically, that's the information. The lawyers are doing their, well, their lawyer thing. It, it's the town of Rochester, not the select board of Rochester. Yeah. So whatever the select board knows, should be passed on routinely to us, and other than you know a direct question of how much money we've spent in eight that, months. That was a request. Yes. That was That's, just a request. That was a request. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, on a, as a request, there has been no routine just letting us know what things are going. Now I realize it's a very slow process, but well, certainly in eight months something's occurred. Interrogatories have gone back and forth. We might have been told that interrogatories have gone back and forth. Well, I didn't hear you, Tom. I said, it's just, there's some things we can talk about, some things we can't. We, we, can't, we can't jeopardize the, the proceedings by saying something in public that could be wrong or yes, unknown. But you could say that we okay. haven't served with interrogatories when it happens. You could say we've completed interrogatories if they have been when it happens. And at least out here on this side, we would know that we are making some kind of progress. Other than spending $20,000, we've been told nothing over eight months. And so I'm just saying, and I understand you can't talk about specifics, but we could at least be updated, generally speaking, what's happening. I think, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that most of what we actually know as a select board is what we see on the invoices. But then you could share that with us. Well, because then we have no, the no. Right, I mean, how many specific questions yeah, and answers? Right. Have you got an invoice that says interrogatories have been completed yeah. or such and such research has been completed? That's at least an update. Right. And then the public at least knows that for $20,000, right. something's actually and, been and done. And I think Doom uh, reflected that. That's, that's what he said is pretty much right on. They're, they're conducting, on what, I, what I've seen, because I sign off on these things, is research. It's all yeah. research. Oh. And it's like... So one fun fact that we you know, learned, that whole area of Rochester, those roads, the creation of those roads are not in the Rochester history because those war roads were created in the town of Philadelphia and we were given that property by the town of Goshen. So that sends people yeah. looking into the town of Goshen, more dramatic things. The Goshen Town Hall has burned three times. They say most of their records are perhaps in the Rutland Town Library. It's, so that's the kind of, exi no, that's the kind that's of the exciting kind of stuff you want to you you find there. And so there we, you go. We, yeah. we, could, we, that's, that's all we can do that. That's all Absolutely. Absolutely. Over this period of time, even yeah. something such as that would have been for we know something, okay. something right. of okay. what's going on. That, that's all I'm asking. That's reasonable. Right. Harlan, you got a question? Yeah, I just, you know. Uh, speak up, please. I've Harlan, been at I'm these. Sorry. What's that? Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. I've been to uh, numerous meetings where I've asked to be brought up to date on any new developments in this case, and consequently, that didn't happen. You know, it would have been nice to know they were priority, you know, without having to go online and go into the judiciary thing and dig around in there to find what's been passed and signed, you know? And the other thing is, it just seems like, are there any new uh, invoices? Yeah, yeah, we got one this week. How much is that? Uh, Forty-nine thirty-three. Okay, so we're yeah. still within twenty thousand. Yeah. But as you no, say, no, 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 twenty-three, twenty-five. No, about twenty-five, twenty-four or something. Oh, yeah, I thought you meant for ninety bucks. <laughs> no, no, you wish. Right. Okay, so we got about twenty-five no, grand no. into it, and it just seems like it's kind of a grudge match between a few members of the board and maybe a previous member against because Mason this is the because board. he has done a few petitions and things that people on the board now right, and you know people what? before um, didn't like. This is absurd. I don't think so. Okay. okay. I mean, we don't have money for anything, right? Yeah. But we've got money to dump into this. Why? Was it our, was Why it is the town afraid the of town? this nice couple suing them? The town is a defendant. Yeah, we're the, we're responding. We're not the ones that created. Well, yeah, this can yeah. all be settled yeah. by making the road a dead end. You're just 
that but that doesn't serves make it right. No it but has that no practical purpose beyond Mason Wade's driveway. Arlen. Beyond there for Route 62, there's nothing opinion. but national that's forest. There's your no private land. land. There's nothing. That doesn't necessarily make it right or illegal. Yeah. But they're not, not even abutting landowners. They are now. They're landowners. They're not abutting landowners to the road that they're bitching about. Actually, they are now. They are now. They are now. Yes. Well, how'd that happen? Somebody they moved the map again? The property in Hancock that that road terminates in. But it's irrelevant anyway, whether they're abutting landowners. The issue is, is it a road or is it not a road? And that's, right. that's what only. is expensive to research for all the, the various reasons. You know, it's, yeah, it, there is, is, you can't just say that it's not a road yeah. because you don't want it to be a road. It was a road when that camp was built. That road was what used to build that camp. Serve? It's serving the purpose, purpose for the, right now. Yeah, it's serving the purpose to cost us a lot of money to figure out See, this, this debate. But well, we yeah. don't have money to fix the roof off the library to put solar on it to try to, you know, reduce our, our yeah. electricity costs, you know? Huh. Luckily, the library is not suing us to fix the roof. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, luckily, you, you could call this thing, you know? Well, thank you. We really understand you. Nobody's willing to talk. There's no, nobody's yeah. willing to talk. You know, and I couldn't hear you over the fan, but they became a budding landowners by way of what in Hancock? They bought the piece of property owned by Mr. Lamont? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. That's in Hancock. That's in Hancock, in Hancock. yes. Hancock. But it's accessed via that road. I understand. So, yeah. 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 How that will play out in this whole situation, I do not know, but that's, um, yeah. Right. It's just I didn't hear what they Yeah. Do you believe that? Wait, could you speak up a little more? Can we go back to intervene? I don't understand what that means. And Dude, what I'm it still has. not hearing you. I got a fan it's here. And it's well, no, it's can you hear what I said? You've got it. What, what, what she's asking can is, can you intervene? explain what the intervention means? I don't understand what it has to what, do. What allowing them to intervene means? Um, I'm confused as to that. <coughs> So intervention, I don't know if that's actually the proper word for what's going on. That's they're, they've offered to share some of the expense because they have a lawyer and they ask if they if we can, if they can take some of the expense and do some of the research. Um, if that's going to be the form of I don't know what, um, typing something that's just you know, yeah, yeah. So, so they're, they're doing the research for the town. To uh, not all of the research. Their case. The town's just yeah. they letting their lawyer handle it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. They they're, interested. Interested. They're, they're interested. They've offered to help and offset some of the cost to what extent. Yeah. You know? So, um, so there you have it. That's the, 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 the well, latest see, thanks and Thanks for the updates that I asked for immediate past. Yeah. Know? I mean, this is obviously information that I have. Well, it's um, information I didn't have at last meeting. So I've been yeah. every meeting. It's, yeah. it's new information. Yeah. yeah. So it's new to all of us. It may just be coincidental that I brought up this meeting. That you also <laughs> happen to get updates. It's new. It's new as, information. Uh, as I was asking, yeah. just periodically something of that magnitude comes to your attention, certainly bring it to our attention. That's good. Uh, all right, anything else on Pine Gap Road? Can we move on? Yeah. All right. Um, well, everything else is going to be kind of boring after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's um, good. Tomorrow is a very long day. Yeah. I not um, be here all night. Joan, you had some updates. We got some um, news about some. Yeah, I got a bunch of things. It's all going to be really boring. All right. <laughs> Take your rocks. Take your rocks. Oh, yes. Can I spread it in front of you? Where do you live? Oh, okay. I don't live there. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep going. Let's take a ride up there myself. Yeah. Or maybe you want to ask me. Yeah. Go ahead. 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 Go ahead.
I just had a question. The solar panels that were donated, where are they now? They, they weren't donated yet. They were, it was an offer, but it's not, uh, you know, there, it doesn't look like that's going to work for the library. So. I was going to say there was an article in the paper yeah. about how it's not going to happen. Well, I read that, um, but I was wondering yeah. if, if, a personal citizen can contact that gentleman and we can I've distribute been, them through. I've been talking with him and, and Rogers. I found uh, possibly another um, nonprofit to see if we can give him his, uh, okay. the benefit that he was looking for. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, Joan. Back no, okay. Uh, first, the village, desi uh, village center designation. Mm -hmm. um, I got word last week, I think you did too, to do what you were away about needing um, some paperwork filed uh, to move the, the designation along, which would help the grant application for the municipal planning grant. So um, the first thing that we need to do is these two letters which I drafted for you. One goes to Two Rivers mm -hmm. and one goes to the to organization, sorry. The Green Mountain Economic Development Court just advising them that the town is, is preparing to submit uh, uh, an application. I'm not sure what the purpose is. I think it's just sort of it's following the, the steps for yeah. the process. So if you could yep. sign those, I can get them sent out. Um, the next thing on my list is um, the next grant and aid project, road project. Um, that we've received, if you remember, uh, we've been told that uh, we've gotten a grant for $13,600 to do our next project. There's a 20% town match requirement, as we did on um, Town Line Road. So a total project cost would be $17,000, and of course the town could choose to do a project which is more expensive than that, just that we um, would just have to put in more money to pay for the cost of it because they'll only uh, do up to our maximum grant, regardless, is $13,600. So, um, and Rita has asked for a date to come and look at possible projects. We can look at more than one, if you have more than one that you want to try and, and do, mm -hmm. um, sometime fairly soon. So I don't know if you've had any discussions yet or have any thoughts yet, about but possible projects, no. but if you don't, I heard now's the time to sort of come up with one or two and then let me know when I can tell you to come out and meet with you on site. All right. So fairly soon, like in the next month or next couple of oh, weeks? Oh no, like what? next week or so. Next week? Yeah. yeah. It's about the same timing as last year, if you remember. They, they ordinarily expected to try and do a project that's completed by year end. We can get extensions if necessary. The fiscal, that, fiscal year, year end or the calendar year end? Calendar year end. Um, so that would have to be done this. If, if at all possible. Fall. Last year we did get an extension through the end of this, this year. Um, so you can do that again, but I think you have to try at least and pick something that's doable. Um, the dust control project? Unfortunately, that's not no. part of the list. You've seen that already, right? You know what the. It's all sections of the road that are hydrologically connected, yeah, maps yeah, on the wall yeah. in my office. You need a refresher on where those sections are and what roads. Probably I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, going anytime, it's right there, you know, uh, on the wall there. Um, and you, it's on the right-hand wall when you come in. And it's the, the kinds of what they call BMPs, best management practices, are grass and stone line drainage ditches and stone check dams. It's all, you know, controlling water and runoff to get it off the road and into places where it's going to infiltrate into the ground and not um, run directly into surface water and contaminate it. So I'll, I'll get you more information if that helps, um, what the, all those various practices are. Um, next, uh, we have received our first uh, municipal road general permit. It's been issued. And I have a copy of it. It's also in file, on file in the office. If you ever want to look at it, it's not all that exciting. This is what it looks like. Just says essentially, we paid our fee. That was step one. Paying the fee to the state. I think it was twenty. Two hundred and forty. Yeah, two hundred and forty dollars. Yeah. Um, and then of course it, it reiterates, you know, the various 
time frames we have to do things up through 2032 to have all the roads up to some kind of minimum standard. But that's a yearly. Um, it's a yearly thing. It's 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 not it's not that much money every year. This is like an initial administration fee as well as the registration fee, and then subsequent yeah, like years it should be less, something like that. Yeah. 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 Right. And then we keep just doing projects as we can and apply for as many grants as we can to pay for them. Um, next thing is we just got word today that our sidewalk um, repair grant application was approved. Uh, this is coming from VTrans. Um, it's the VTrans Bicycle and Pedestrian Program. And we asked for, remember, well, the grant amount is uh, $24,900, which represents a little bit of the, a little bit less than half, 50% of the total cost, because these small grants, that's, that's the maximum they find is 50,000, right? I'm sorry, 50%. So we're, we have another 24,900 in construction costs, plus the town is required to pay for any design work, engineering work, um, construction supervision, that sort of thing. Exactly. So the budget that I prepared, which was, you know, kind of a best guess of what this thing would cost, uh, is a total of 54800 So the town will be on the hook for $29,900 to do this project. And this project consists of um, creating a new sidewalk or redoing the section of sidewalk that's between Sandy's um, the bakery and the intersection with School Street. That section in there. It's kind of like a demonstration project to show, you know, how things can be improved and what it can look like. And if you remember, we specifically chose a location that did not have any kind of water-related, runoff-related issues that needed to be fixed first. It's just a simple, straightforward sidewalk project, sidewalk improvement. And part of it includes doing something about that slope down right at the end of the sidewalk onto School Street where, you know, there's been some mm -hmm. mishaps in the past. And the idea is also to fix that part of it. And then also a, a short section in front of Park House on the Main Street side is recreating that sidewalk there as well. So that's really clear where people should be parking and where the sidewalk is. So it's just those two little sections and hopefully that'll be just, I'm calling it phase one, so hopefully there'll be a lot more following once the stormwater master plan is completed and we know where we can get funding to do bigger projects. So after that, there's something you need to sign. Uh, this is, let's see, so just a basic commitment form that are asking you to sign. And um, two things you should be aware of is that they're asking for the name of the full-time municipal employee employee who will be in charge of the project. So presumably we will hire an engineer to help us oversee things since none of us are you know, experienced in sidewalk construction. Um, and I can't do it because I'm not full-time. So I thought maybe what you can do is designate one of you and I could be your backup and say there's two people but you're the full-time person just so we can <laughs> Did you say employee though? It does. It does say uh, municipal employee full time. Like They're not employees. Yeah. Well, that's what we got. So Unless you can think of someone else who's an employee, that um, you want Cooter to do it. As a, as a name person. I mean, you know, Cooter's also got his hands full with other things yes, too. So yes. you can put me in if you're going to deal with it. If yeah. you're going to deal with this, okay. you can put me yeah. in. But I'm not. I'm not taking on anymore either. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Well, That's I can ask if there's, yeah, you know, yeah, we're a small town. Yeah, and we, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sure we can get around this. I yeah. don't think it's going to be an impediment. Just, just wanted to point it out. Uh, we do have to say that we're ready to move as soon as the grant is signed, and that'll probably take 30 days or so by the time they get, get the actual paperwork done and the grant to us for signature, and then it's countersigned by the state. So it could be as long as two months before that process is over, but they like to know that we're prepared to move ahead with the project within a month of having all that paperwork done. So that could be, you know, like September, October or so. Are we prepared to start talking to 
whoever's going to help us design and you know supervise the installation of the project. So the design work starting forward or the construction work? Well, we have to figure out how that's going to happen. And um, you can get some advice on this because it does say in the coming weeks, an agency that's from VTrans, project manager and a project supervisor will be assigned to our project and an initial project meeting will be scheduled. And that's where we'll discuss how the project development will move forward uh, and the schedule and the next steps. So they should be able to help us with, you know, saying, oh, here, here's what you need to do, step A, B, and C. Yeah. Um, and part of that certainly will be hiring someone with some kind of engineering skill. It shouldn't be anything that's too, too complicated. Um, nevertheless, we need someone with, obviously, who knows what they're doing about that. Could be cricket. Um, if she's, if she's got the time. We already have her signed up for two or three other yeah. projects. So, um, nevertheless, you could yeah. sign that also. So, do we have to pay for the engineering costs above the 54000 54000 includes the engineering costs. We pay twenty twenty four nine. Plus, yeah, that includes um, estimated engineering is like a couple thousand dollars is what we're estimating. Excuse me, John. Yeah. Did I understand you that in addition to the park race between Sandy's and Spruce Creek, you are, the town is planning to fix the part in front of the park house? The so park house, frontage along Route 100, um, and then the section from the bakery down to School Street. Okay, thank you. Because the, the part in front of the park house Right in front of my house, I see those cameras. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we were able to prioritize that. Before you move off the sidewalks, we're going to get a picture of where you want to see the public quick site. That's it. It's a blue journey. Don't, if I could just mention, on weekends I've noticed in front of Sandy's, for instance, the state has marked the white line at the edge of their roadway. Cars not only park on inside of that, but they're almost all the way up to the grass. So as part of this redesign, I'm guessing we're probably not going to have curbing because we typically don't. Uh, no, actually, yeah, this is probably. Curbing. But can we spend a little more money on another line of paint that indicates, yeah, this is the parking for the cars and this is really the sidewalk? Well, I think it's where we have curbing because without curbing, it's not going to change. So curbing is, is part of the plan? Yes, yeah. it is. Oh, yeah, it's granite yeah. curbing it's and concrete sidewalk. I don't think there's room for the sidewalk. It's mostly on the sidewalk. Yeah. It's mostly on the sidewalk. Yeah. 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 Either on the sidewalk or on the other side. Yeah. Of the Maybe a grass yeah. strip. Yeah. Yeah. Curves or something. Yeah. And the sidewalk, yeah. like down by the Utah stuff. The sidewalk's five feet wide. There will be, there, that does, yeah, that kind of stuff is going to be probably part of the design for other places, which will be part of the sort of the stormwater, adjusting the stormwater issue as well as the sidewalk need. Um, but not at this location, not to separate doing that. That's where the engineer comes in, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we are working somewhat in the right, and in the state's right of way, so they're going to be involved with whatever we do there. And they've already been advised that, you know, we've got this kind of thing, this is what we're doing. So they're going to be part of the process. So while we're on those sidewalks, is there some reason why there's no crosswalk from the skip mark to the park? I went across there the other day. And I thought I was going to get hit by this car from flying up from nowhere. But there is no defined crosswalk going from the skip mark. There always has been. But it is not there. Found in blue paint, I'm sure. But is that the town's responsibility or is that the I think, state? Uh, I think that's the town. Yeah. Yeah. You did it last year, didn't you? Yeah, it did. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not there. Have, have, uh, they have to make your right to be painted. The town used to paint the town paint. The lines that it was painted. Yeah, we it hasn't been. Painted. This year, the town didn't do any paint. They hired it out. It wouldn't cost that much to, to just think that. It always well, costs a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, it doesn't seem like it would cost, it cost more if somebody just hit. <laughs> Where else you got that? Next item. 
the stormwater master plan, as you know, is moving along. And uh, the next step that the consultants would uh, need to do is some digging. Um, we did talk about this a little bit at the meeting, and they would like to schedule it sometime yeah, sure. this month. Sorry. And I asked them what kind of equipment would be needed, and they said a backhoe. So um, it would be for a day. And they're, the places they need to dig, these are temporary holes that they would dig, do the soil testing, and then fill the hole right back up. It would be one is uh, near the town garage, uh, close to the river. They say it's on the north corner of the town garage uh, lot. One uh, on the new park, uh, and one behind the town office where the current snow dump dumping site is, which is over there, right? So over yeah, by the brook. Okay. So those are three locations. I figure that's probably going to take about a day. So the question is when we could allocate a crew person with a backhoe that we either we borrow or rent from someone else. That's the question. A couple of sections. There's lots of sewer and water pipe. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, they don't plan to do anything without making sure they know where the infrastructure is. They may be talking to you, Terry, to make sure they know. There's um, really not much room over here that they get sewer and goes right down to the middle of that lot. It's not going to be a great big hole. It's enough to do a, a soil test. Uh, I don't know. But I asked them what equipment would be needed, and they did say that. Yeah, probably would have excavated. One of those little cat, uh, cat things, or whatever. Probably. Yeah, just for a test hole. So is that our expense to rent that? It is. Um, so can you give me a you know, general idea? Can I can you pick a few dates that I can get back to them and bring to you? Mm -hmm. well, um, can I suggest some dates? <laughs> yeah, there. What do you suggest to say? Uh, August 20th, 22nd, 27th, 29th, 30th. Those are... The week of the 20th would be good, I think. Week of the 20th? Yeah, Dana's gone that week on vacation. Okay. So that would be either a Monday or a, I think that's a Wednesday. That sounds good? 20th is a Monday. Yeah. So the 22nd so would be Wednesday. the 22nd on Wednesday? Sorry? When's the 22nd? May. If you want to, okay. Wednesday would be better than Monday. Okay, 822. Mondays are just never good. Okay. Um, what's that? The Better Roads grant that we have for the road erosion survey, Two Rivers will actually be doing the work. Uh, but when they do that, they will be spending some time out on the road with you, Cooter. Uh, we don't have a date for that yet, but um, they may be ready to do it this fall, and we will hear from you know, about that. She, she may be yeah, contacting the director, so just so I you know. I have questions, so I didn't pick a road. No, no, that's different. This is a this is a survey of all the roads that have hydrologic connection and where there are erosion problems. The other one is the grant and aid, and I don't blame you for confused. It's a lot of stuff. Um, so nothing you need to do yet, but just be aware that she's going to be wanting to spend the day at the with the, with the roads. Um, and then last but not least, uh, in case you were interested in an uh, update on the Wing Farm Road culvert, um, the culvert was removed about two weeks ago, maybe a little bit less. Um, came out in pieces, and then I think it ended up being scrap. That's going to be that's yeah. being sold, and the town is getting the proceeds from the sale of the scrap. Um, it was. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was a little chunk of tape. Um, the bypass road, you probably know, is already in. There's a temporary bridge that was lent to the town at no cost by the U.S. Fire Service, which is a very nice thing. Um, and the concrete abutments for the new bridge started, I believe, today. That's what I was told. Um, so you might want to go down there at some point. Four that road four, is yeah, closed got the 12 to 2 tomorrow. Right, for boring. So I mean that's that pretty, pretty exciting yeah. stuff. Yeah. 
And the really exciting yes, thing will come so is when the new bridge go. arrives. The new bridge is something like it's 60 to 65 feet long. It's a big bridge. It's going to come come in two sections, and they're going to be having a crane there for the day because they have to, you know, lift it up and place it and avoid the overhead lines and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's going to be kind of interesting. But Wayne, Wayne Farm Road. This is a project that's being led by the White River Partnership. So that's all the boring stuff I have to do. No, that's good. Thank you. Not that boring. To no. that. I don't know if you're familiar. Um, there's a lot of highway stuff in there, but do you have anything else you want to add to the highway oh, God, stuff? Yeah. No? <laughs> we got all of us. Uh, I've got a truck up at JMB International with some emissions issues and some other stuff being taken care of. Mm -hmm. State inspection, one of them. But I found I had ET transmission cooler lines. They had to order those and been there for like a week and a half. And which, which vehicle was this? The Western Stack. Okay. I just thought better to fix those leaks now than the yeah, snowstorm. Yeah. Um, we have had a contractor put in a driveway culvert up in Great Hawk without a permit. Mm -hmm. What do we do about that? Is the, um, did they do it to specs? No. No. Can you put in a driveway? Is that what you're doing, sir? A driveway culvert? Thank you. But he didn't apply for a permit. Well, I guess we'll um, I'll get with you and find out who it is and then we'll. Well, I can do it. Can somebody, can somebody come Would you like to know who it is? In an open meeting. <laughs> it was excavated. No, I meant the property owners. Oh, yeah. dear. Yeah. Yeah. Harlan, you were asking something? Seems like I remember hearing something about maybe it was Bay Park. I'm not sure around that. But wasn't he asking about putting in a temporary culvert up there? Temporary culvert? Yeah, yeah. It was a temporary just, yeah, he said it was just a temporary thing to. I don't know, we'll find out if that's the one you're talking about. I just, that sounds looks pretty firm up to me. You plant, you plant a grass on it. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. I, I well, there was somebody here a couple of months ago talking about putting a culvert in a bed. <coughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But they have to apply for a permit. Right. Yeah, I'm just saying somebody right. was here, but they may not have applied for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the asphalt pile down there that we mm -hmm. have. It's going to cost about fifteen thousand dollars to crush that. Really? Yeah. Which is actually a pretty good price if you wanted it. Mm -hmm. But as we heard, it just causes trouble. <laughs> I think we should consider giving it away. If we spend fifteen thousand dollars to crush it, we got a material that we don't want to use. Can we put it in our ditch? We'd be better off <laughs> <laughs> to spend that money on on rare ground. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we used it up on uh, we used up on Maple Hill, and it's worked out. Extremely well. We can't. We have to think about that. Yeah, I think we should make a decision. We're never going to grade that. Hmm? Yeah. We're never going to grade that again. Well, it hasn't needed it. Because it will someday, though. Well, I, I believe that when we put down, you know, reconstituted asphalt, we normally top it off with gravel. In this case, it hasn't been done. Uh, it's holding up really well, but it's not it's not complete. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's, 
I could do it before he give it away. You might want to give it just a little more thought. Fifteen thousand. That's just small. That's somebody coming in and doing it on, on location? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's four, four twenty-five a yard. That's a spot. If you wait, yeah. the price is going to go up. If the right? pile gets harder, and you'll have to bring an excavator in. Now, once it's ground up and it sets, does it harden up again? Or yes. Yep. Yeah, you're going to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it'll get hard and chunky again. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe we can find that over there. I mean, it's great stuff for driveway. The parking lot, but I don't believe it's good material for a road unless you're going to pave over it. Yeah. All right, well, we'll, um, we'll sit on that. You right. think that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And where are we standing on the roadside mowing? Yeah, we two got a couple of bits right here, so we had to okay. put it out to fit, yeah. And then, are we going to start looking for another person? Or yep, where does that stand? Where that stands is we're going to let you get settled in and then start that conversation with you and, and, and work with you on, you know, don't want to just throw someone in your lap that you're not because wanting or ready for. Do you feel on a, a lap already? Well, if we're going to rent an excavator, we need both trucks going. Yeah. So it's kind of, there's a lot of hinging on that. All right. If we're going to wait, then we're going to have to hire an excavator or an operator so we can finish the grain on North Ottawa. Mm -hmm. so we're kind of in a limbo mode here. All right. But other than that, that's it. That's it. Well, in, in the answer to the um, the um, road mine, why don't we open up these bids now and then go where we're at with that? Got um, one for um, Music Mountain property maintenance, and it's a price of $13,955, and this is to include two passes on all gravel roads and three passes on all paved roads, and um, does not include class four roads or trails. And the mowing will be done with two machines, first pass with a six inch rotary mower, and second and third passes will be done with a five foot rotary boom mower, up to 22 foot reach ability to cut up to eight inch trees. Um, some places that have grown in will be trimmed as necessary. And that's for the whole town, say. Where's that again? Music Mountain. And the second bit we've got is from Kevin Bagley Incorporated. He's putting a bid for roadside mowing in the amount of $16,500. And he is not saying um, anything about um, how much of the roads or what equipment that he would be using. Well, the spec. The spec. She bid off the spec. Bid off the spec, yeah. Um, so it. Um, those prices, I I move to accept the uh, bid through the Music Mountain. As long as he's got the right insurance. Yeah, yeah. Because he can't yeah. do that work until oh, until he gives me insurance oh, bids. He can't do any work until yeah. we get insurance yeah. certificates. Yeah. And we didn't um, spec for the whole right. town. He's to offered to do right much now. more than what we've done before. For, so he knows yeah, he knows what it is. Excuse me, his bid for $13,955. Thank you. And is Music Mountain property maintenance? Music Mountain property maintenance. Mm -hmm. So 
was saved in two grand by shopping local? Yeah. Yeah, 20, uh, 2500 actually. Yeah. So I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just got it. So that's the answer to that question. <laughs> that was far back. So that wraps up the highway stuff for now. Terry, you want any updates on the utilities? Uh, <clears throat> the work on site one is about done. They, it's got electrical guys got to come back just do a little bit. And uh, I'm cleaning up this week. We ran into some problems with the piping down underneath after 35 years of being in the. <laughs> yeah, it looks nice and gnarly. <laughs> is that on site three? No, from site one. That's still <coughs> And so I had them replace it all with PVC above the floor. But the guy didn't charge us anything extra. So it's hard to explain. Uh, I pumped it down the tank down into the field to so give them those three days they needed to do the work inside the So we didn't have to pay a pumping fee. That was written in the contract, so that saved us some money. And then uh, site three is stone was a little bit dirty. It was quite a bit dirty. So now they're rescreening them to take all the fines out. I didn't notice underneath the contract most of those things call for washed stone. That it didn't call for washed stone. Uh, but it's, it's not bad. I mean, they are, they're doing a good job. They're taking it out. It's not going to cost us anything. It's just because the fine, there's enough fines there so it didn't meet the spec. I guess what happened is the guy that was loading it dug in the pile right at the very bottom instead of picking the loader bucket up six inches and taking the stone for the job. There's a new guy they set on the loader at where they bought the stuff. Because actually the company they bought it from is actually covering some of this cost. So that should be all back in by the end of the week. They should be laying some pipe down there. The guy coming to set the pumps next next week. The electrician will be down there next week. So it's going to be close, but they should be done. But at first, as the contract says. Probably start working more and more as it gets closer to the end. But. Yeah, you don't seem to have a <laughs> very big crew most of the time. But I know they got two, three other jobs going on, and it's like everybody else, I guess, is trying to get things done before fall. And everybody calls in the fall. But had they not had the, you know, if it hadn't been this dirty stone, which I still kind of complain, you know, we're paying the engineer to oversee this. How come you didn't pick it up before it got put in there? That's what I asked. You know, that, that shouldn't ever get, you know, because they happened to dump it on the end, you gotta push it the whole length. It's not like you can, you know, back out in there because you just can't put the truck weight on it. So it's not like they're back and dumping on three foot deep. It's right there and they were pushing it with those or you kind of, just seen where it was, you know. So I wasn't real happy about that. But they know it now. And it's getting it's getting repaired, so <coughs> other than that I guess it's going pretty well. It's pretty nice down site one where you can just look down in there and see yeah, the pumps. Not have to go down inside. But he redid it with schedule 80 instead of messing around with ductile. Which in that environment you might as well have PVC as I have the other. Should wash off and clean up better. All right. Yeah, looking at those pipes that came out of there, it's like, it's really good that we 
the bolts were completely rusted off. Yeah, yeah, it was, oh, cool. they don't even look like... Oh, they ain't holding it, it was rot. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad. And when he went to jackhammer around the outside, it broke a hole right away. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, where it was grouted in the cement, yeah. just chiseling a little bit. Yeah, it was tight. It was cold, so it was good to do the whole thing. And he was good about it, so it's probably easier for him to replace it all than it was to try to match it on anyway. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. That's it for you? Yep. The, um, in the new business, you had something here about um, putting a bit out for some paint on the town office? Yeah, I'd like to try to get this job done mm -hmm. sooner than later. <coughs> um, I think it has to be somebody who is asbestos qualified. But um, I just wanted to get the okay from you to try to what, get that from done. From the outside? Yeah. Lead qualified. Lead qualified. I was going to say, not a Yeah. 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 Um, you're going to um, put, put together something to put in the paper? Yeah, I'll send it over to you first because I really yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Is this the whole building? Yes. Okay. The whole building? I would say um, maybe give, give um, two proposals one for the half, the whole one building for the whole. Mm -hmm. well, lead, lead abatement is going to be an issue in this building because of the pre, essentially pre-1970 yeah. paint that's on it. Yeah. Well, this the outside has been painted a couple mm -hmm. of times. So it's going to be scraped down. Now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to be cheap. This uh, district designation resolution application. That's for the uh, we were just asking just for a simple resolution that says the town intends to proceed with applying for the. Okay, that's just district designation. No, that has to be an actual resolution, so I can show that it's in the minutes. So if you mm -hmm. make a statement to that effect, that goes into yep. the minutes. That we that intend to um, apply for the designation. Apply for the district designation downtown. Downtown district designation. Yep. So I'm. We are. You agree? I agree. Yeah. So there you have it. Yeah. All right, so Nancy. Going back to the painting of the building, would you would you consider putting vinyl siding on, given the we, fact we that we actually was talking about that. We did. We yeah, did we talk about it. Depending on how much the lead abatement costs, it might be cheaper. Why don't we get a price? And the uh, grant and aid year two. And we're working on that already. And um, I did not approve the the minutes from the last meeting, so I moved to approve those. I didn't see any progress with them to do so. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the old business, we're still um, mulling over the workers' comp. Yeah, we still just don't yeah. want it to get lost no, in the shuffle. No, lost. But that's pretty much covers it, unless anybody else has something else they want to bring up. <coughs> um, thanks for coming out. We got all sorts of homework. Can you give me a